Hello listeners, this is the reading of the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth and final quarter of 2022. The series is titled On Death, Dying and the Future Hope. The author is Dr Alberto Tim, while your readers are Percy and Sibylla Harold. Lesson 1 is ready for teaching on October 1. It's titled Rebellion in a Perfect Universe and I'm Percy Harold. Wednesday, September 28. The Price of Pride. Within scripture we can see two predominant themes or motifs that are competing with each other. One is the theme of Salem, Mount Zion, Jerusalem and the New Jerusalem, which represents God's kingdom. The other is the theme of Babel and Babylon, which stands for Satan's counterfeit domain. Several times God called his people out of pagan Babylon to serve him in the promised land. For example, Abram, later Abraham, was asked to move from Ur of the Chaldees to the land of Canaan. We read that story in Genesis 11.31 to chapter 12 verse 9. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed." So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. Then he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. At the end of their long exile, the Jews left Babylon and returned to Jerusalem, as the story goes in Ezra chapter 2. We'll just read verse 1 which says, Now these are the people of the province who came back from the captivity of those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away to Babylon, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, every one to his whole city. And the rest of the chapter, which goes to 70 verses, just lists the heads of families and the number of people who went with each family. And in the book of Revelation, God's people are called out of end-time Babylon, as you read in Revelation 18 verse 4, to abide with him eventually on Mount Zion and the New Jerusalem, which we read about in Revelation 14, 1 and Revelation 21, 1 to 3 and verse 10. Let's read those verses. Revelation 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. And Revelation 14 and verse 1. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And Revelation 21 verses 1 to 3. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and be their God. And verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Read Isaiah chapter 12, verses 12 to 15. What far-reaching consequences did Lucifer's pride, while in heaven, bring to the universe and to this world? Revelation 14, beginning at verse 12. How you were fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How you were cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations! For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. In the Bible, the city of Babylon stands for a power in direct opposition to God and his kingdom. And the king of Babylon, with special allusion to Nebuchadnezzar, becomes a symbol of pride and arrogance. God had revealed to King Nebuchadnezzar that Babylon was only the gold head of the great image of successive empires that uh, we read about in Daniel 2, 37 and 38. And Daniel chapter 2, verses 37 and 38 read, You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. Challenging God's revelation, the king made an image entirely of gold, a symbol that his kingdom would last forever, and even required everyone to worship it, as we read in Daniel chapter 3. And you'll remember that Daniel and his friends were cast into the fire of that pit, and that God protected them, as in the case of the king of Tyre in Ezekiel twenty-eight twelve to 19 the king of Babylon also became a symbol of Lucifer, as we read in Ezekiel twenty-eight twelve to 19 Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz and diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings, that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore I brought fire from your midst, it devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror, and shall be no more for ever. Then Isaiah fourteen twelve to 15 moves from the historical realm to the heavenly courts and highlights that a similar proud and arrogant spirit generated the original fall of Lucifer. The text explains that Lucifer planned to exalt his throne above all heavenly hosts and make himself like the Most High in verse 14 of Isaiah 14. This was the beginning of a new and hostile situation in 
in which God's altruistic love and cooperation would be challenged by Lucifer's selfishness and competition. The enemy was not afraid of accusing God of what he himself was and of spreading his lies to other angels. Here are the mysterious origins of evil in the universe. And so to finish today, why is it so easy to become proud and boastful of either our positions or achievements or both? How does keeping the cross before us prevent us from falling into such a trap? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.